Hello and welcome to another one of our nutrition videos. That, um, that this this week we're going to touch on protein. Um, uh, I've sort of come across a lot of people who are not quite sure what good protein is, when to eat it, how much is enough, all that sort of stuff. So hopefully we answer a lot of those questions that you may have. All right, so let's get right into it. Uh, firstly, why is, it, why is protein important? Well, it's an essential component of your diet. It helps your body to repair tissue, helps you to, your body to grow tissue. Very important for anyone managing disease is that actually it's a very important part of controlling and regulating hormones. So um, in, in our cancer class and people with diabetes, commonly, you know, a lack of muscle tissue and lack of muscle sort of comes hand in hand with a lack of protein. So um, people with weight loss helps control metabolism um, and obviously defends against illness. So, but basically like protein and, and muscles, um, you know, like I said, they work hand in hand. The protein makes up your ligaments, tendons within your muscles itself. It stores a lot of the proteins. So that's where people who are protein deficient actually deriving their protein from themselves. So, um, yeah, it doesn't sound good. Um, hair, nails, skin, teeth, tissue, organs, and bones. All right, so it's a very important component for health. Um, Highly active people have an increased muscle breakdown, so they're going to need more protein to rebuild their bodies and prevent injury. Um, children need more protein because their bodies are constantly growing. Menopausal women with imbalanced hormones, dieters, patients recovering from illness all need more protein. So I've sort of touched on that quite quickly. You, you can't underestimate the power of, of increased muscle and, and you know exercise damages it, protein repairs it more or less. So the science behind it, um, proteins consist of amino acids, so they're building blocks of the body. The body can only manufacture 14 of the 22 amino acids it needs, so the other eight cannot be made by the body and must be obtained from your diet. And these are the essential amino acids. All right, so um, lack of protein, as we mentioned before, without enough of it, the body will either let cells die or break down other muscles and tissues to get the protein it needs to for repair and to you know function the body will actually begin to eat itself um, to get what it needs to survive and this is what we call a catabolic process which is more or less otherwise known as stress all right so um, you know we all know what stress is like when you're under the pump well when your body's not getting enough protein and has a lot of breakdown well that's exactly what it feels like 24 7 all right and only bad things happen as a result of that um, so lack of protein problems. So not getting enough protein will affect the following functions. Bone cell synthesis, red blood cells production, that's where the cancer thing comes into it. Immune function and antibodies, skin elasticity and muscle tone, organ function, mobility and joint integration. So you can sort of get the idea of osteoporosis from the picture here, um, you know, so where you know, a normal bone would look like that. Um, so remember, muscles support the bone. So if you don't have strong muscles, you're going to have weak bones. Um, so someone with either not exercising and not eating enough protein with it will end up uh, looking like that, which is not good. Um, so we all know it helps with the muscles. So how does that work? So it's the building block of muscle. It helps to build and maintain the muscle during the training the, when the muscle's being broken down. The trauma causes a reaction in your body to repair and reinforce the damaged fibres. This is when the muscle building process occurs and also where the weight loss results are best. Um, and the reason for this is because the building muscle increases your metabolic rate really, really quickly because basically muscle is very inefficient. A bit like towing a heavy caravan on your car, you just sort of suck the fuel out of the car um, just because your car becomes so inefficient. It's pretty much what more muscle does to your body. So it means it's easier to burn fat because the fat will be what the fuel is to be put into the petrol tank. Um, extra muscle allows you to burn the fat throughout the day. So more damage to your muscles from training is more of repair time equals more energy expended. Um, you can see where cardio is the exact opposite. Cardio is trying to become efficient, not inefficient. So it actually offloads the caravan to make your car not use as much fuel. So you can sort of see why most people's exercise programs to lose weight are doomed from the minute they begin. Um, all right, so to explain the, the uh, metabolic rate thing, muscle's the key. Lean muscle makes up 60% of your day of your body's uh, metabolic rate. This will be like a pie graph over a period of uh, 24 hours. Um, 
you know, I learned this from a long, oh, many years ago from a um, across a guy, Paul Cribb, Metabolic Precision course, I think he runs, but he spent a lot of time looking, investigating into this and there's stacks of research, you know, I could quote 50 other books saying the same thing. I thought this was a very easy way to explain it, but basically lean muscle making up you know, two thirds of the uh, influence of the metabolic rate. Exercise makes up 17%. Eating, just just eating, even if it was garbage food, just eating alone makes up 12%. So the people who are not eating enough, you can sort of see why they their metabolic rate slows down and the smallest percentage of this is body temperature. So regulating hot and cold and stuff like that. But you can see overwhelmingly it's, more muscle you have, the the better your chance are of having a high metabolic rate, better your chance are of staying in shape and keeping a good uh, figure all year round. All right, so the more you have, the better. Now, the key to also within the is to eat your protein. So, um, science and sports and exercise demonstrate that consuming whey protein, um, and it could be any protein to be honest, whey protein is just the easiest to sort of get in anywhere really because you don't really need to cook it or anything you can you prepare it earlier and you can just suck it down so um, uh, also being liquid it gets into the muscles a little bit faster than say food because you don't have to break it down and digest it and all that sort of stuff that's the other reason why whey protein is highly endorsed um, and also because people make a lot of money out of it so but you know you really can get the same effect from eating some eggs or or a piece of fish or something like that. But the key part to this is after a workout, you've got to do it within 30 minutes. And if you sort of miss that window, you know, you'll still get some result, but it won't be as great as, as it would straight after the workout. Um, and, and even for, you know, it's been proven that um, if you do that, you can boost your body's metabolism for as much as 24 hours afterwards. So, you know, it makes a big big deal, a big difference. Um, now, we, we've been one of our trainers and chefs. He's got some protein tips, and um, I'll direct you to um, at the end of the video here where you can get some of his good good tips for some excellent recipes and stuff that we've used, uh, that he uses at his restaurant. We've used in our nutrition classes, and that'll really give you get you some different ways of thinking other than just whey protein. So um, now bear in mind, protein helps get rid of cravings. So people who, uh, you know, find it really hard to not eat the Tim Tams or the chocolate or whatever it is that you crave and you, and sabotages your training efforts. Um, eating protein helps to balance those cravings out because um, the, the cravings usually happen from eating too many carbohydrates, which means you get too much sugar. Um, and then because you get a big spike and you're going to get a big crash in it. And it's when you start to crash is when you get the cravings. So when you eat uh, protein, it basically it's like throwing a log on a fireplace and it balances the fire out, makes the fire sort of sustainable for a longer time instead of up and down if you were just using kindling. Uh, that's probably the easiest way to explain it. Um, so as I was saying before, when your body senses the blood sugar crashing, it wants to balance out the insulin and blood sugars by sending you a craving to eat more of, you guessed it, sugar. So but by avoiding this and eating something of fat or protein on its own will suppress that craving. Um, so good examples of high protein foods, whey protein, eggs, chicken, salmon, uh, tuna, um, cottage cheese, organ meats, you know, liver, all that sort of stuff. People will usually, Ugh. but that stuff is really, really rich in protein if you can stomach it. And obviously whey protein, just, uh, you know, people probably overdo the whey protein, in my opinion. I think they should just eat a bit more normal food um, and they would get a bit more out of it. Now, a uh, very important thing with this in terms of regulating stuff, eat, it, eat protein with every meal. So vegetarian meals are not a good idea. And by the way, you don't um, things like uh, legumes. They're not a really good source of protein. They're a very poor source of protein. You really will get more from flesh meats and and eggs. You know they're they're really the, the key. And you don't need a lot. You just need the right amount for you. All right. So the the right is the the amount to get is the right that's just for you. Um, and I, I like to use that firewood analogy. So your firewood is your fireplace runs different to mine. We can't eat the same amount. It's impossible. So you can't measure stuff with grams and all this rubbish that you see on the internet. It doesn't work that way. If it was that if it worked that way, everyone would already be doing it. All right. So just find the right balance for you. Um, Bear in mind, most people eat way too many carbs, and and even worse, they eat them on their own. So, if you having an apple, just an apple on its own is not a good idea. Have an apple with some nuts out, or an apple with some cheese, or something like that, something to balance it out. Um, 
and if you're always adding protein and some good fat to each meal, you have a nice balanced fireplace and optimal health and energy. All right, so um, think of the food like firewood. Um, eat good fats if you want to lose fat. Protein is essential with every meal. If you're craving, eat something, protein snack on its own. So you could eat just um, like the piece of cheese on its own. Usually something a bit denser, though, usually a flesh meat. Maybe have a boiled egg on its own. That will balance your craving out. Um, uh, eat high quality protein in 30 minutes of completing a workout and listen to your body. If you do those things, you'll get good results from your food. And, and like I said, don't overdo the protein. Just find the right mix for you. Um, eat a good array of vegetables with each meal as well. Um, and you'll have a nice balanced diet and life will be really good for you. All right. So I hope you enjoyed that video and I'll see you on the next one.